Hey guys, it's Ms. Johnson and I'm here to bring you our first video for Unit 5. Um, unit 5 moves into quadratic equations. We're talking all about quadratic equations in Unit 5. So today our learning target is I can find, um, I can identify parts of a parabola. So a parabola, what we should probably know is um, a quadratic equation is anything can be written in the standard form that looks like this. I'm going to have y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. What makes an equation quadratic is the fact that you have an x squared. Makes the equation quadratic. So anytime we have an x squared in there, we have a quadratic equation. Okay, the graph of a quadratic is called a parabola. Okay, so that's all about unit five. That's all what unit five is about. Quadratic equations and their graphs and how we use them. So let's just talk about the parts of a parabola. If I label these graphs, here's what a parabola looks like. It kind of looks like this U shape and it can look like this where it faces up or it can look like this where it faces down. Um, so one main point or probably the most important point in a parabola is a vertex. Okay, they have a point called the vertex. This is a starting point when the graph, when you graph a parabola, and it is also called the maximum or minimum of the quadratic. So when I look at a quadratic equation, when I look at a parabola, um, the most important point that we're gonna look at is the very bottom, the minimum. This is the vertex here, um, and it's a minimum. And over here, when it's opening down, the vertex is up on the top. Some students like to think of this as the middle. It's the middle of the graph. It's where the two sides will be symmetrical to each other. So when I go down here on the left, this is symmetrical to the part that's going down on the right. Same thing over here. When I go up on the right, it's symmetrical to the point going up on the left. Um, and that brings me to my next point. So my next point is the fact that these things have an axis of symmetry. So notice that the parab parabolas are symmetrical. They have an inv invisible vertical line. This is invisible. That point invisible is important. It's not actually part of the parabola, but it is a vertical line that we call the axis of symmetry. Okay, It runs through the vertex and has the same value as the x-coordinate of the vertex. And I'll slide this down when we look at our next point. Um, so that line, actually I should have put that dotted line on there, sorry. This dotted line is called the axis of symmetry. And it's dotted because it's not actually part of the parabola. It's just showing us where the middle of the parabola is. So axis of symmetry. Notice that that axis of symmetry runs right through the vertex. It goes right through the vertex in both places. Um, that is not a coincidence, okay? It runs through the vertex because it has the same value as the x-coordinate. Then the next point that we're going to look at is the point where the parabola crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept, and this is the constant of a quadratic function. Now, y-intercept is not a new concept for us. This is the same y-intercept that we have always looked at when we look at any type of equations. Um, so in this case, here would be my y-intercept. And over here, this one would be my y-intercept. Okay. And then the last point about these, we kind of touched on already a little bit. The graph will open up when my leading coefficient, my a value, is greater than zero. Or in other words, a is positive. The graph will open down when my leading coefficient is less than zero. Or in other words, a is negative. And you're probably wondering, well, what happens when a is equal to zero? Well, if a is equal to zero, then your whole first term drops out. This whole first term would drop out, and then you no longer have a quadratic. You just have a linear. 
So a will never equal zero in a quadratic equation. It's either going to be less than zero or greater than zero. So this is a graph that opens up. This is a graph that opens down. So that tells me that a is less than zero. This one tells me that a is greater than zero. All right, so those are the, that's just a picture of what the parts of a parabola look like. Now, we talked already about how this is going to be the most important point that you find in the parabola is the vertex. So let's just talk about how we would find that vertex. If we're finding the vertex, here's what we're doing. We need to figure out what is A, what is B, what is C. And then we use this formula, find the x-coordinate using this. This is something that you might want to highlight, put stars around, draw arrows towards. This is something you're going to use a lot throughout this entire unit. Okay, so x being the opposite of b over 2a, opposite of b over 2a, that's going to give you the x-coordinate of the vertex. And then, after we get that x-coordinate of the vertex, we'll plug that x-coordinate back in to get the y-coordinate. We all know how to do that. We did that all throughout the systems unit. And then we write out the vertex as an ordered pair, because it's a point. It's a point on the coordinate plane. Um, don't forget that the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so now let's practice finding a few of these. If I look at number one, it says y is equal to 2x squared plus 8x minus 3. So I'm going to start by identifying my a, my b, and my c. a is always with the x squared, b is always with the x, and c is always the constant. If they're written in standard form, they go in order. But not all equations are written in standard form. Sometimes the terms are mixed up and out of order. So be careful. a is with your x squared term, b is with your x term, c is the constant. Then I want to decide, does this graph open up or open down? Well, I know that I know that this graph is going to open up because A is positive. Okay. Um, then I need to find the axis of symmetry. And remember, the axis of symmetry and the x-coordinate of the vertex are the same thing. So finding the axis of symmetry... Um, means I am taking the opposite of B, that's going to be negative 8, all over 2 times A, which is 2. That gives me negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2. So that's my axis of symmetry, x equals negative 2. But that's also the x-coordinate of my vertex. So I've got half my vertex completed in that one step. Then I need to plug it back in and get the other half. So I'm going to take this, negative 2, and I'm going to plug it back into the original equation any place that I see x. So my y value is going to be 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 minus 3. Now, just like any, time, any other time that we plug these things in, we want to make sure we put it in parentheses, especially if you're typing this into your calculator. When you have a negative in here, Putting it in parentheses will square both the negative and the 2. If you take the parentheses off, it's going to square the 2 and not the negative, and then you're going to get a different answer. So make sure that you put parentheses around it. That's a really important thing. Um, and then let's go through and solve this. I start with my power. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. So positive 4 times 2 gives me positive 8. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16, and then minus 3 at the end. 8 minus 16 um, is negative 8, and negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. So that's the y-coordinate of my vertex. Okay, got the x, I've got the y, done with the vertex. Y-intercept is really easy, that's just the c term, and c in this case is negative 3. Okay. So the hardest part that you have to, the hardest thing that you're going to have to do, or the most complex thing you're going to have to do, is this vertex and axis of symmetry, which are really the same thing. Okay, let's take a look at number two. In number two, my a value is negative three, that's what's with my squared term, and then my b value is negative six, that's with my x term, c value is four. Um, now my a is negative, so I know that my graph is going to open down. The axis of symmetry, let's find that, so x is going to be the opposite of b, that's positive six, over two times a, which is negative three. That's six over negative six, 
which is negative 1. Then let's plug that back in and get the y coordinate. Oh, I should write that out. x equals negative 1. That's my axis of symmetry. So that's the vertical line. I'm going to have a vertical line through negative 1. Um, and then that's also the x coordinate of my vertex. So I need to go back and get the y coordinate. y is going to equal negative 3 times the quantity negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1 plus 4. Um, negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. S negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6, and then positive 4. Negative 3 and 6 gives me 3, 3 and 4 gives me 7. So y is 7 there. And then the y-intercept is pretty easy to find. Again, that's just the c term here. c term in this case is 4. So my y-intercept goes to positive 4 on the y-axis. Let's try a couple more. Number 3, I have y equals x squared plus 2x plus 18. Um, my a here in this case is going to be a positive 1. So I have a positive 1a value, I have a positive 2b value, and I have an 18 for c. Um, since my a value is positive, I know that the graph is going to open up. I know I'm going to have a parabola that looks like that. Um, and then let's find that axis of symmetry. So I'm going to have x equals, that's kind of ugly to look at. Let's try black. That's better. x equals the opposite of b, that's negative 2, all over 2 times a. So 2 times 1 is 2. That's negative 2 over 2 or negative 1. So I know my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. I also know that that's the first half of my vertex. Let's plug it back in and get the second half. So I have negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 18. That's positive 1 minus 2 plus 18. That's negative 1 plus 18, and negative 1 plus 18 is 17. So 17 is my y value. Y-intercept, easy, positive 18. One more practice question like this. Um, this time I have 2x squared plus 16. I have only two terms. If you take a look at it, you need to recognize what term is missing. Since you don't have an x term, that means it's the middle term that's missing. If it helps you, write it out like this, 2x squared plus 0x plus 16. So then I, I recognize that my a is 2, my b is 0. A lot of people want to drop that 16 into the b spot because it comes right after the square term, but notice that 16 is the constant. So 16 is actually your c term. Be very careful with that. So the term that's missing is the x term, which means that's what gets a 0. And then I know that this graph is going to open up because my a is positive. And then I need to find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is going to be the opposite of b, so it's like negative 0 over 2 times a, which is 2. That's negative 0 over 4, and it doesn't even matter what's in the bottom because 0 divided by anything is still 0. And negative 0 is no different than 0. There is no negative 0. Okay, So I know that my axis of symmetry is going to be 0, which happens to be the y-axis. It's the vertical line at zero. I also know that that's going to be my um, first, my x coordinate of the vertex. I need to get the y. Well, the y is pretty easy because when I plug zero in, zero squared is zero, and zero times two is zero. So really, this whole term drops out, and I'm left with just y equals 16. Now, what happens here? Your y-intercept also ironically happens to be 16. I shouldn't say ironically, it's coincidence. Um, it's, it's meaningful. It actually is on purpose. Um, so your vertex is the same thing as the y-intercept. And the reason that that happened is because there's no b term. When there's no b term, your vertex and your y-intercept are going to end up being the same thing. Okay, so that's going to take us to the end of our notes one for today, just identifying the parts of the parabola and practicing finding the vertex. Um, thanks for listening. Don't forget to check your note sheet off with Ms. Johnson, and I will see you later.